Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a frequency distribution and histogram using Excel. The spreadsheet you're looking at now contains data for 50 students. Let's say we want to create a frequency distribution for grade on exam. Let's first take a look at this data and see what the lowest grade is and what the highest grade is. To analyze this data and see it more clearly, let's copy and paste grade on exam onto a new sheet. Now to find the lowest grade and the highest grade, we can use the min and the max functions. The range is the highest grade minus the lowest grade. So for the lowest grade, we can, type, we can use the min function, type equal, min, open parentheses, then enter the range of the data, and then close parentheses. Okay, now hit enter, and the min is 55. That means the lowest grade out of the 50 grades was a 55. Now for the highest grade, we use the function max. So type in equal, max, max, open parentheses, and then we select the cells we're interested in. It's A2 through A51, close parentheses, hit enter, and you can see that the highest grade on the exam was a 99. Now the range is simply the highest number minus the lowest number, so what we can do is Type in equal D3 minus D2, hit equal, and that's 44. So the range for this data is 44. When you create a frequency distribution, you first have to decide how many class groupings you want to use. Let's say I want five class groupings. So first I have to calculate the width of the interval. If all of the data is going to fall into five categories or five class groupings, how wide does each class grouping have to be? We have a formula for that. It's called width of interval. The formula for the width of the interval is the range divided by the number of class groupings. So that would be equal to the range divided by the number of class groupings. And let's say we want five class groupings. You can pick anything you want. As a rule of thumb, five is the minimum, and 10, 10, 11 is probably the maximum. But five is a good number. So D4 divided by five, and that will tell us the appropriate width of the interval. So according to this, the interval width should be 8.8. .8. It is not aesthetically pleasing to have 8.8 .8 .8 as an interval. That means every 8.8 .8 points, we have a new class grouping. But usually when we talk about grade on exam, we talk about every 10 points or every 15 points. And with most numbers, we talk in terms of 5, 10, 15 as intervals. So even though this calculated as 8.8, .8, we're going to use the width of the interval as 10. Okay, so if we use a width of the interval of 10 and we have five class groupings, we'll be able to take care of all of the data. So let me set up a table. Okay, the lowest number is 55, so I could start this class grouping at 51. So this class grouping would go from 51 to 60. My next class grouping would then go from 61 to 70. And then we would have 71 to 80, 81 to 90, and 91 to 100. So here we have five class groupings. And the five class groupings take care of all of the grades. The lowest grade is a 55. The highest grade is a 99. So we can categorize all 50 grades into one of those class groupings. 
A frequency distribution tells us how many students fall in each category. So for example, 51 to 60, 51 to 60 we would want to know the frequency count, that is how many students got an exam grade that is between a 51 and a 60. And this cell, we would want to know how many students got between a 61 and a 70. Sort of like tallies, but they're frequency counts. And so I'm going to head this with the with the heading frequency count. I'm going to put frequency as the heading here. Okay. Now Excel doesn't look at these, these are really labels. Excel uses what is called a bin number. And the bin is really the upper limit of each class grouping. And that is what Excel uses to count the tallies. So the bin number for this class grouping is 60, that's the upper limit. The bin number here would be 70, 80, 90, and 100. Okay, so again, the bin numbers are the upper limits for each of the class groupings. Okay, now we're ready to create a frequency distribution and also a histogram. So what we do is we go to the data tab and on the right hand side you should have the data analysis command here. If you don't have the data analysis command then it wasn't installed yet. It only has to be installed one time. Once it's installed then it always appears. So if you don't have the data analysis tab here then go to file Go down to Options, click on Add-ins, and here at the bottom where it says Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go, and you should check off Analysis Tool Pack and Analysis Tool Pack VBA. You should check off these two. I have them checked off. Once you check it off, it stays, and then you click OK and then you should have the data analysis command installed. If it isn't installed, you might have to restart Excel. Okay, so now that we have the data analysis command, let's click on that, and we see the various data analysis tools here. One we want is highlighted histogram, and then we click OK. And now we have a dialog box asking us for the input range. The input range, I'm going to have A1 through A51. And for the bin range, and for the bin range, I have K. 3 through K8, and you notice that I highlighted the grade on exam and I highlighted bin because I have those as labels. So make sure you check off labels. Also check off chart output so that we have a histogram. And then we can have this in a new workbook. I actually want it on this sheet of paper. So we have to give it the output range. And for the output range, just click in any empty cell. And that's where the output will be. So now I'm going to click OK. And you can see here the frequencies. And if you add all of these numbers up, 1 plus 11 is 12 plus 17 is 29, plus 14 is 43, plus 7 is 50. So that would be the 50 students, so the frequency counts add up to 50. And so what we can do is we can copy and paste this into this table. Let's take a look at the histogram. A histogram actually is quantitative data that is continuous. And if you look at this, this is really a bar chart. There shouldn't be any gaps between the bars on a histogram. 
So let's change this, and we can change this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one way to change it would be to click on the chart itself, and then go under the Design tab, click on the Design tab, and over here where it says Quick Layout, we can choose the one that looks like a histogram. There you go. That's Layout 8. And if we click on that, it changes the graph to be a histogram. A histogram, again, is, is where the bars are all touching. There shouldn't be any gaps between the bars. Now we can change the titles. It shouldn't say bin here. It should actually say grades. And there are all sorts of things you can do to change the way the chart looks. So that's it. We've created a frequency distribution and a histogram for grades. Thank you for watching this video on how to create a frequency distribution and histogram. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something.